everybody, it's Peace Killer. Actual name Josh. I'm telling you Josh because I'm going to talk about a serious subject right now. I'm going to talk about MS because MS is a big part of my life because I have it. So what MS is, is an autoimmune disease that your immune system attack, basically attacks the nerves in your spine, your spinal cord, and then the nerves in your brain. So your myelin sheath starts, like, unsheathing things, I'm going to say. even I'm not very good at explaining this part. But on MRIs, your, uh, your lesion, lesions show up on the MRIs, which are like white spots <clears throat> on your, uh, fucking, let me think here, on your brain. Like, there's the gray matter, and then there's white spots, and you're like, shit. So... <clears throat> There's, uh, there's two types of MS. There's relapsing, remitting, and progressive MS. Relapsing, remitting MS. God damn it, I'm so sorry, my nose is itchy. Relapsing, remitting MS is... I'm sorry, my voice is terrible. Um... You have a flare-up. <clears throat> you have a flare-up. And then, uh... After your flare-up is done, you usually get put on steroids or something. They usually put you on a medication for when you're not on a flare-up. Just to hopefully not get a flare-up again. Um... They fucking when you're not on a flare up, you should be like almost a hundred percent normal, but not a hundred percent because you have MS, obviously. So it's not the best, but it's not the worst. It could be progressive MS, which is you have MS. There's no relapse phase or remitting phase. You just have MS and it gets worse and worse until you die, basically. Which is terrible, obviously. And there's cure... No, not cures. They haven't cured MS. Don't think I said that. There is medicine for relapsing, remitting MS. Like, there's anything from... Well, what I'm on, what I am on right now is Tysabri, which is the best, strongest MS drug they have right now. But it's, you know, it's expensive because they, it was made for Crohn's disease, but it works for MS too, so that's cool. And, uh, and I was on Copaxone before that, which is like, the weakest MS drug. And it's pretty easy to not. Like, I was on it till I had a second flare up, and then they're like, well, shit, we should just put you on Tice Aubrey. So, the medicine for progressive MS, there is none. Except for chemo, which, from what I've heard, is not good. It does not, like, it might be good medically, like, it might help you out a lot, but it makes you feel terrible. And I've, that's what I've heard. I've never been on it, obviously, so I'm, I'm not sure how terrible it really is. But it's probably not the best. So, I'm going to tell you my story about MS, basically. And 
how it has affected my life and my wife's life and my whole family's life. So, back in 2012, early 2012, like February, I was working at a foundry on the hottest part to work in the foundry, almost like the metal was just molten metal. It just cooled off. So it fucking was hot. It could be like 125 degrees up in there. So I was working there and all of a sudden I couldn't stand up well. And I was like, this isn't safe. So I went and talked to my boss. They checked me out a little bit. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with me, obviously. Because all they were doing was like, just seeing how my reactions were, basically. And, uh, so they're like, well, just go to your aunt and she might, like, help you out there. My aunt's a chiropractor. So they thought it was like a pinched nerve in my back. And I was like, and I had no reason to not believe them. So I went to my aunt, I got to my aunt, and she's like, I can't, I can't touch you. Because you have drop foot. And drop foot is just when you're trying to walk a little bit. And you pick up your foot and it just drops. Like, when you step, it just drops. Not like a normal step where it goes... Ooh. But it was just like this. Boom. And that was that was how my foot was. So she brought me to the ER. And the ER took forever. It took like six to seven hours. They did a bunch of tests. I had a spinal tap, which was terrible. They tapped my spine, obviously. But the guy was like... I'm good at this, but your spine's really bony. And I'm like, let's fucking do it, man. And it really, really hurt. And they didn't figure out anything from that. So they sent me to a, like a regular family doctor. And the family doctor was like, I don't know why they sent you to me. I'm going to send you to a neurologist. So I got sent to a neurologist. And she was like, all right, we're going to test your leftover spinal fluid because they probably didn't throw it away yet. And we're going to check, like, make sure you don't have any of these other things like Lyme's disease, which is very similar to MS, but it's not. It's different. So I didn't have Lyme's disease or any of the other things they tested. So they were like, you most likely have MS. But they can't for sure say I had MS until my second flare-up, which proves that it is MS and not some, like, fluke disability thing. So for, like, the first year of MS, I was pretty good. I started working at Walmart, which was all right. It was pretty good in the electronics. I got to look at all the cool electronic stuff. Except for the people that wanted to buy the electronic stuff. They just didn't know what was that. What? Like, smart TVs. Smart TVs aren't great. I know. I have one. It's terrible. But the guy... But some people were like... Why does it need to be a smart TV? I'm smart enough to use the TV. They're making those kind of jokes. And I'm like... Fuck you. And then I sold them the TV, and they bought it, and it was good to go. But, I worked there for like, a y not even a year. And I got a flare up during when I worked there. And they were like, alright, you gotta start Tysabri, because it's a stronger drug, and you, mo you definitely have MS. And you're definitely not doing well. Because I was, I have relapsing remitting MS. But because certain things 
I don't get back as good as other people should. Like, my eyesight is terrible. My legs are always numb. I have terrible balance. I walk with a cane. And so we asked, we basically set up an appointment at Mayo, like, a year or two ago, I think last year. Yep, last year. And we set it up. We went to Mayo Clinic. It's God damn awesome clinic. It's the best place that I got to go to for my MS so far. And they, uh, they're like, these MRIs are showing that you have a lesion where you're, you're in your brain stem where your spinal cord and your brain connect. And it's big. And it's the reason why you have MS as bad as you can have MS in the relapse and remitting form. So... Even though I have relapsed and remitting MS, I don't get back to normal, and I'm still getting progressively worse just because that lesion is in a strategic spot, as the doctor at Mayo like to call it. So, that was terrible news, and so that's that wasn't great. My eyesight isn't good anymore. I can't see the big E with my left eye with my glasses on. Because there's a giant blind spot right smack dab in the middle of my eye. And, uh... And that's part of the reason I don't actually drive anymore. And my eyesight is the reason why I don't drive anymore. Like, my legs don't react as fast, which isn't good for driving, because sometimes you want to brake really fast. But one day, I was pulling out of my road, and I was like, oh, there's nothing coming. So I started pulling out, and if I... And I look again while I'm pulling out, and there's a fucking semi almost about to smash me. So if I didn't hit the brake as hard as I did, I would most likely not be alive right now. And I wouldn't make this great content for you that nobody seems to like. And so... I was doing that. So my MS is just getting worse. And it's not great. I have to walk with a cane. I can't drive. I have to use a catheter because... A catheter. Because I can't pee without it, basically. Because I, I take a medicine that makes my bladder not overreactive. But because of that, I can't pee well. So, I just take it. That's what I'm gonna, uh, I just take it. And I just catheterize. It's, it hurt at first, but it's not, it's no big deal now, not really. And, uh, but it is kind of like embarrassing still, even though I've been doing it for like, a year almost. I still have to like... In public it's more embarrassing because you obviously do it and then you gotta get rid of your garbage and you don't want people to see you do that because then they might judge you or something and it's terrible. So, right now, in my life, 
with my MS. I'm doing the YouTube thing because it's probably the most fun thing I can do while also maybe making a few bucks. Maybe. Not sure. I haven't yet. I made like 60 cents through it since September. So, you know, good amount of money. And, uh, my wife is going to college so she can get her degree in STC, Scientific Technical Communications, I think it's what it's called. She's, it's just good stuff. And, god damn it, I'm really bad at this. And so I sit at home a lot and do this stuff while she's at school. God damn it knows. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, people don't know how to really react to you anymore. Like, my family is really good. I really love my family. But my family, like my dad and my mom, they're just terrible sometimes. My mom keeps posting things to my Facebook that's like, Hey, look at this. This might work. This guy sits in a vibrating chair and he only takes one Tylenol a day and it's basically fixed him. And I'm like, it's, no. He probably has very, very mild MS and that will never work for me. And my dad's like, you better fucking be able to pay for this shit. Why don't you have a job yet? You goddamn lazy asshole. And I'm like, I can't fucking work there. It's, it's too hard for me to work. And he's like, you can be on a computer. And I'm like, you don't understand how... Well, I cannot read. So, that's great. But, well, like, my brother and my sister. Well, my brother's an asshole. I texted him happy birthday a couple weeks ago. And the first thing he says to me is, who's this? And I'm like, fuck you, Brandon. But my sister is fantastic. She is one of the best people to deal with this. And so is my cousin Brock, and so is my wife. My wife has been through this ever since it's happened. It's amazing. She was my girlfriend then. Like, we were dating for just a year. It happened, and she, was, she, she stayed there, which is amazing. Because this is such a big thing that if she didn't stay there I don't know what I'd be doing right now because I'd be basically useless and my dad would just be yelling at me all the time and my mom would be like oh it's okay you can it'll, be, it'll get fixed at some point and I'm like no so if my wife just left me it would be terrible but I would have understood why she'd leave me because this is a big thing she has to deal with. So she's amazing that she's dealing with this right now. She's dealing with my problems and her own problems all the time. And she's amazing. And I love her so much. And <clears throat> my friends try to help me out as much as they can. And it's... Everybody just cares about me a lot, and it's great, and I couldn't, like, they couldn't make me happier because of what they do for me, and let's see what else. I have a script on the side, that's why I keep looking to the side. So basically, my MS 
is relapsing remitting, but I never get 100% better. Like most people get close to 100%, but never do. Nobody ever gets 100% better. But like, I always have numb legs. I always have terrible eyesight. I always have terrible balance. I can't, I'm not getting better. So it's really hard to tell if I have a flare-up because it's just a little worse of the normal. So uh, some days I might be having like a really bad day. Like I might not have the energy that I should have. And then some days it might be me having a flare-up. And you usually have to wait like a week. I'm like, all right, I'm not moving well for a week now. I should have a flare. I'm probably having a flare up and I should get this shit checked out. And that's another thing that's terrible about MS. I can't stand the heat. If it gets above 70 degrees, I'm dead. I can't leave the house. I gotta be cold. I gotta have to be cool. So like, I can't function like a normal person if it's above 70 degrees. I can barely move. I don't know why, it's just the heat is bad and it's just bad. And most people think it's not great. MS that is, and MS isn't that great. But, you guys can help with it by donating to the MS Society. I will have a link in the description where you can just go to this website. I'm doing Walk MS this coming up weekend. And it, it just helps raise money and awareness for MS and for a cure for MS which would be fantastic. I would love that. A lot of people would love that. So, that's pretty much everything, I guess. Um, thanks for watching me talk about my shit. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye